Hello everybody, my name is Cubits, and I'm here to talk to you today about an indie game that I've been addicted to over the past week. I know everything has happened so fast, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to invite all of you to the bachelorette party. The Long Dark and I are now engaged. There will be strippers, uh, both at the bachelorette party and at the wedding. Uh, but please wash your hands first before attending, or you will be removed by a swarm of Lydia's. Jarl has a oh no. To be your house, Carl. It's an honor to serve you. The Long Dark is basically the perfect example of why game developers should be in charge of making games and not corporate executives. Creativity and skill still mean something in this hell world. Whoa. So I wanted to take the time in this video to give unending props to a really well-made indie game because I think it deserves the praise. And honestly, with the constant disappointment and abuse of power we've seen in the AAA games industry, it's important to call out quality game design by real artists when you get the chance to see it. And this game is just that. Not to be dramatic, uh, but to be super dramatic, The Long Dark is by far the best pure survival game I've ever played, and this review is really just gonna be me ranting about how freaking smart it is, so be prepared for that. It's a game all about low-key tension, instead of the typical bombast you get in other titles. But it is so incredibly thrilling, despite the fact that, as games go, it is pretty slow-paced. I'm gonna try to make the argument that this game is a prime example as to how deliberate and self-aware game design is the key that made this game so unbelievably fun to play. To give you an idea of what this game is about, it's basically what happens when gamers go outside. I hear something. Ah! I'm dead. Press F! Press F! Press F! Dead! Well, <laughs> The Long Dark is actually about surviving for as long as you can in the hostile Canadian wilderness. After mysterious geomagnetic activity, electricity is basically wiped out, and wildlife is much more hostile as a result. Meaning that you need to scrounge up scarce resources to produce shelter, food, and water while evading wolves and bears, and most terrifyingly, the cold in the process. Seems pretty simple, right? Well. It is kind of simple, but not easy or linear, which is what makes this game so incredibly rewarding. Survive. Very bare bones as a character motivation, but it is executed incredibly well. And let me tell you why. I hate micromanaging my inventory in games. I hate monitoring my character status, and in general, I hate looting in the majority of open world games. Most games, in my opinion, never really thought out how they were going to implement those features into the game in an intelligent way. They mostly just put them in there because, you know, we've always had that, or whatever. You think gamers are just going to play games because they're fun? No. We need weapon skins that look like a child vomited in a ball pit. No, those colors don't cause enough eye strain. We need more contrast. Oh my god. Okay, so anyways, I hate all of those features, but I love The Long Dark, and it is literally all of and only those things. It hasn't even been a week, and I've already clocked 35 hours in this scam. The only way I could possibly describe how this has happened, how a person like me, who should hate the very core of this game, absolutely loves it with all of my very, very inattentive heart is masterful game design. 90% of the game really boils down to managing a backpack full of snacks and walking around trying not to get eaten by wolves. And it is the most engaging game I've played in ages. Basically, the game devs decided to take the typical power fantasy roller coaster style of game design and blow it up and instead throw your weak gamer body into the wilderness that just says, deal with it, nerd. Contrasted with the danger in nature, and that is really true to what nature is. Nature is in incredibly beautiful, but also nature doesn't care if you survive or not. Oh my god, he's right. <laughs> It's a game that strips away control and asks you to empower yourself in its harsh world. And that isn't easy. Not to throw too much shade or anything, but 
Often, survival mechanics in games rarely serve any satisfying purpose. I say this as an avid fan of Fallout. Most games that have hunger and thirst and all that stuff, well, I think it's usually implemented into games in a somewhat aimless way. It's a side feature that quickly becomes a hassle with little to be gained from participating in it at all. Which can be okay for a niche audience if you just want a dash of realism carrying around a canteen, but honestly, beyond that, those kinds of games offer very little in terms of making the survival mechanics actually enjoyable and engaging in themselves. And don't get me wrong, I love a lot of games that have these limited survival features. I just think that they serve little purpose and often detract from the greater gameplay experience. The stuff that is just more fun. I have to ask, what is the point of hunger when you can literally just walk into town and buy food from a grocery store? What does that add other than just a little sense of realism? In my opinion, it doesn't add much to the gameplay. There's no reason to be proud about buying noodles from a grocery store. Collecting money or tradable items just occurs in the gameplay naturally. There is no challenge involved. It's not really engaging your mind. It's just a thing you have to do. Which really isn't the way you should describe a game mechanic if you think it's rad. The Long Dark survival system is the complete opposite of aimless. The entire point of the game is to stay alive by managing your needs. That is literally your main objective. Be alive. Which on the harder difficulties is basically like trying to bail out a boat with a pasta strainer. Death is always present in this game. And in the survival mode, your save gets deleted when you die. You only have one chance. Although the story mode is a bit more forgiving in that aspect since it does have a save feature. But at least in the survival mode, it really means that elements of gameplay that are usually an accessory to the main experience in other games, such as looting, inventory management, and monitoring your status, become the core of the game. And everything else is built around those features. Which means it's actually really amazing and super smart and stuff. The Long Dark is a puzzle based around time. Let me explain. This game has a cold meter, a hunger meter, a thirst meter, a sleep meter, along with various status effects that could decrease your overall health bar, like injuries and illness. It is all about choices, since depleting any of those things can eventually kill you. It's really your job to assess risk and come to a good conclusion about what makes the most sense to do at the time. The key here is that resources are scarce and the weather is unforgiving, so you can't just wander around anywhere at any time, and you certainly can't spend a lot of energy without having a way to get that back. See what I'm saying? What this means is that the game itself is chocked full of choices every single second, and you really do feel like they matter because every moment that passes is another moment where your status decreases, and since resources are scarce and require a lot of effort to obtain, there is a constant pressure behind you to keep moving, solving problems, and planning for your next big decision. And it really doesn't matter how far you get in the game, there's always something threatening out there. And that is what makes this game so freaking addictive. Going outside could mean freezing, but you need to go outside to get wood to keep a fire going that will keep you from freezing in the night. Searching for food will use calories, but you need the food for calories. The clock is always ticking and you need to make decisions as to what is the best way to spend your time before disaster strikes, before a huge blizzard, before a wolf attack, before you run out of matches for making fire. It keeps you exploring and moving throughout the world. You don't need any external reason to keep playing. You don't need quests. You just want to survive. Because of this, there is an underlying tension that rests underneath every single decision. You will be constantly thinking about what is next, calculating the time spent on resource gathering activities and possible patterns of weather, and what location will end up being the most safe. 
This means that even though a lot of the game is waiting and moving items around, each ounce of your inventory space and every second spent doing something feels like it has massive consequence. And in many cases, it does, because something is always going to go wrong in a world that dangerous. As I said earlier, in many games, most items are an afterthought. Hundreds of pounds of potions accumulate without much purpose, and you can carry around dozens of weapons without burden. 80% of the stuff that you carry, you might never use. Even in games with survival mechanics, inventory management can seem like a really irritating chore, like cleaning out a closet. Part of the reason why is that even though you think, hey, this item might have a point to it, you don't really know that it will, and many items are easily replaceable or just unnecessary altogether. 5% buff to frost resistance? More like, shut up, I don't care. In the long dark, however, almost every item has a purpose, will be used, and there's always an advantage to having extra wood or extra antiseptic, but it comes with a cost, a cost you care about and that nobody needs to tell you to care about. That really plays out in this game. Since survival in this game is a never-ending, time-sensitive puzzle, you have to put it together for yourself. It is constantly rewarding and absolutely makes you feel responsible for every success and failure in your playthroughs. Nobody's directing you anywhere. The world is brutal and you know it's gonna throw things at you that you might not be prepared for, but you're completely responsible for taking care of those issues. Nothing feels scripted. Even when I end up dying on a character, I quickly feel really excited to get back in it, start a new character, and implement a different strategy. Because each time you learn something new, and each time is a fresh new try at getting it right. One of the best parts about The Long Dark is that you can choose to spawn in random locations and the item spawns are always randomized. In one playthrough, I was almost totally frozen to death but I ended up finding a corpse and finding some matches. And that was honestly one of the most hype experiences I've had in a video game in a while. Matches, matches, matches. That is game design, bitches. The randomization really adds to the constant tension in the gameplay since it's so centered around looting. Especially on those harder difficulties, you don't know if a backpack or a box or a deer carcass is always going to have something that you need. The maps are all connected together. And when it comes to the overall map world, it's probably only been like a third of the way explored by me. And I've played this game going on dozens of hours now. It's worth mentioning also that this is a game built around accessibility with a very detailed set of difficulty tiers, which basically means there's a game mode for everyone. Going from light survival and exploration heavy to I have no pants, I'm cold and being mauled by bears constantly. Oh my God, now there's a bear. Cool. <laughs> Rock did nothing. That one just so happens to be my favorite difficulty. <laughs> this is a great game philosophy because not only is there a different game mode for every type of player, but there's also a different experience in each playthrough depending on what difficulty you choose. On the Pilgrim difficulty, the game is more of an enjoyable stroll through the woods with a little bit of fear. Whereas on the Interloper difficulty, the hardest difficulty, it's about struggling for every single extra minute of life, which makes it ridiculously challenging, but also ridiculously engaging and thrilling. Oh, and about that stroll in the woods. By God, the art and music and sound effects in this game are absolutely lovely. It has a beautiful painterly art style that makes you want to stare at the game for hours. Majestic and varied landscapes with little hints of what happened before you got there. They created a world full of beauty and death, just like our world. It also has a haunting and emotionally provocative soundtrack that adds so much to the tense and brutal scenarios you find yourself in. And the sound effects, boy, they totally pull you into the experience. The satisfying crunch of snow under your character's boots 
the cawing of birds in the distance, the whipping sound of wind in a snowstorm. All of that makes you have to seriously engage your senses when you play because not only are the audio cues really vivid and immersive, but they also play into your situational awareness. Are the birds flying over a carcass nearby that I can loot? Is that a wolf I hear behind me? Is the snowstorm kicking up? All of that work really fits together into one seriously smart freaking game. This game has an absurd attention to detail when it comes to its own mechanics as well. It includes a shockingly dynamic weather and clothing system, where the wind makes a difference in how warm you're able to be, whether or not you can even make a fire out in the open, and high winds will even knock down more branches to pick up for crafting. Moisture also makes a big difference in how effective your clothing is at a given time, and there are plenty of different clothing items you can layer for whatever your needs are. More clothing means more warmth, but less mobility. And that isn't even the end of all of the detail in this game. As you can tell, the devs really went the extra mile in working out the logic of it all. Including all of these variables only adds to more possibilities, which is the very foundation of what keeps this game addictive and fresh on every new playthrough. I personally hope that they keep adding more and more features into survival mode. Like for instance, something along the lines of a challenging friction fire system. They are still updating the game after all. This is also a good time to talk a little bit more about the story mode, which is a really fun way to get introduced to all that this game has to offer since there's no permadeath and it introduces items and concepts in a very well-paced way. It starts you out learning about simple things like making fire and boiling water, and then brings you out into the larger world to really start exploring more of what the game has to offer. As of now, the story mode is currently incomplete with only two of five potential episodes released at the time of making this video. However, each episode is relatively lengthy, especially if you stop to smell the roses a bit. And honestly, I really think that the game translates surprisingly well to a narrative-based form of gameplay because it's generally pretty open-ended about how to survive, and it also really gets you to care about helping other characters, which makes you do more exploring and more crafting than you usually want to do. Plus, it keeps you moving through the maps and gives you a real specific purpose with the threat of death looming, but not so much tension as I said, since you can save. Also, the voice acting is tremendous. You can tell they really valued that in the development of the game mode. In a nutshell, The Long Dark treats all of the skills involved in the game development process seriously. Something we don't always see these days. I think that The Long Dark shows that survival features don't have to be irritating or boring, as long as the design of the game is built around those features and treats them with real gravity. Then I think the mechanics involved, inventory weight, hunger meters, and so on, they really flourish. And survival games can be beautiful too. These games can look like paintings. They can sound really vivid and they can even have stories built into them. As much as I've tried to say that the core design of a game really makes or breaks the entire experience, I also think that all those additional talents added so much to the game and how addictive it is to play. This game really does boil down to managing four meters at the bottom of your screen. But man, this game is so well executed that something as simple as that has truly given me many hours of enjoyment and I can't wait to see what's next for this game. I definitely think this game is worth trying if you're into survival features in other games or you just want to try something new. If you like games that are open-ended and you like games that are challenging, there's pretty much no doubt in my mind that you're going to enjoy this game. If you like this video and you want to see more of them, please make sure to hit the bell and subscribe to my channel. Also, special thanks to Niffler who actually gifted me this game and gave me the chance to play it. And super special thank you to all of my current patrons on Patreon, who keep the more scripted form of videos going. And they are Jesse Vlogs, Recon is Dead Inside, Scott, War Minister of Kuslavia, Shadow Warrior 1000, Felix, David, Oswald, BBD, Simeons, Cole, Joshua, Stefan, and Jesse. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.